but I wanted to show you guys the liner that was in the pond. It was kind of a mix and match of some EPDM, but this was the pond liner. It's almost like a polypropylene or a polyvinyl liner of some sort, which makes it very rigid and brittle, especially over time. Whereas our 45 mil EPDM will not get brittle and break and rip the same way this stuff does. It will flex, it's easy to shape to the pond, it's very malleable, which is one of the reasons we like it. It's not cumbersome the way that those plastic liners historically are. So. Just wanted to point that out. Another big reason why we choose the EPDM is it just gives us creative flexibility and it will stand the test of time, unlike the stuff behind it. So I think we're gonna need a little bit more fill than just the three loads, but we'll see. I am willing to bet that we are going to have five trucks total. Dan thinks we're gonna need more. I don't, I'm not sure how many Luis thinks. How many trucks of dirt you think we're gonna bring in here? Three more? Okay, Luis says three more. What is up everybody? Good morning, Chris from Team Aquascape. The gang and myself are going to be taking on an incredible transformation project. We're gonna be rehabbing an old pond out here in Wayne, Illinois, which is only about five minutes from the shop. So what that means for us is less windshield time, more time out here in the field, being able to take on a beautiful project. So here is our canvas that we are working with. You can see that it is an old ecosystem pond. Looks like they did an okay job of utilizing Aquascape product. However, the presentation leaves a little to be desired. We've got new homeowners in the house. They've been here for maybe a couple years, have done an incredible job of renovating the house, but the pond itself has been neglected. As you can see, it's full of cattails, leaks, there's stone displaced all over the place. We are going to be turning this into a pondless waterfall. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and rip out all of the vegetation inside the pond, as well as a lot of the stuff surrounding areas here in the landscape. We're gonna be doing a split stream, one waterfall starting up there, another one starting over here. We'll have to rework a little bit of that wall, but another stream kind of coming into here, and then they will tie together somewhere in this area in through here and tying into the bottom waterfall, which will go into the basin area, which will be sitting right here on this portion of the project. So we've got a few days out here, we'll have a considerable amount of removal. We will not be using all of this granite. We'll be using some of it, but we will be getting rid of a lot of it here on site for the homeowner. But you can see it's a beautiful backdrop. Oh, here we go. We got Luis and Corey just showed up. They were sleeping in, so I guess we'll just wait on. Up when we could. Yep, I know. So you guys brought one of the trucks. We've got Jack and Dan in the other truck following with the equipment. This is going to be our access. You can see Illinois Brick has already brought some of the material. We've got some sand for around the reservoir, and then we've got some beautiful pallets of moss rock as well up and through here. Now this is not all the stone. We have another load coming either later today or tomorrow morning. But first things first is going to be demo and removals and then getting the reservoir in, which again will go down in that area through there. You can see we've got a significant grade change. There's that old bio falls up there. So it should lend itself to a very fun, unique looking waterfall, one of a kind waterfall that we're not unaccustomed to building and making incredible pieces of art using water and stone. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera down, start tearing into this thing and we're gonna get going. All right, so the guys are covering up the patio and then we've got Jack and Dan down here with the equipment. We brought both of our mini excavators out here as well as the dingo. We'll probably end up bringing the skidster out too depending on how the project works its way out. But we are loaded down and ready to rock this morning. So pretty tight access down here for any of our vehicles. Oh, hey Jack. Oh, hi Chris. How are you this morning, huh? Good. how are you? Oh, so good, I can, I can barely okay, see you. Yeah. Anywho, so we got both of our machines. We are on the end of a cul-de-sac over here. This is where all the material is coming from. So when the stone truck gets here, parks out here, and then the Moffitt will bring everything back. Order of business will be to get all this stuff unloaded. We are going to go back to the shop. Probably, like I said, grab our, wow! Probably, like I said, gonna bring our skid steer back out on the project, so we're gonna leave this trailer hooked up, but the first order of business will just be to get this stuff off of the truck and trailer and get it up to the job site. I'm gonna bring the old girl down. Mm-hmm.
demo about halfway done. As you can see, we've got a lot of the liner out, but I wanted to show you guys the liner that was in the pond. It was kind of a mix and match of some EPDM, but this was the pond liner. It's almost like a polypropylene or a polyvinyl liner of some sort, which makes it very rigid and brittle, especially over time. Whereas our 45 mil EPDM will not get brittle and break and rip the same way this stuff does. It will flex, it's easy to shape to the pond. It's very malleable, which is one of the reasons we like it. It's not cumbersome the way that those plastic liners historically are. So just wanted to point that out. Another big reason why we choose the EPDM is it just gives us creative flexibility and it will stand the test of time, unlike the stuff behind it. So get back in the machine, let's keep going. is ripped out we have to bring in at least two trucks worth of fill so we brought one out jack just went to empty the other truck of all the garbage that we pulled out of here all the cattails all the muck we left a little bit of it down at the bottom but that's okay because the bottom of our reservoir is only to that little shelf right over there so the guys got all the aqua blocks built next step is going to be dumping this and kind of backfilling into this hole and then we'll go ahead and get our reservoir placed out set our 10 aqua blocks locate our pump vaults and then work ahead from there we also have four tons of sand that's back over there that's going to help us level everything off and more importantly backfill around the sides of everything just to give us that nice clean safe edge all the way around we're not backfilling with any dirt with some potential rocks or any sharp objects in it so we're gonna go ahead and dump that dirt level all this stuff off dig it back and then we'll get our reservoir set In this step of putting your reservoir in for the pondless, we will need to put sand at the bottom because it's cheap insurance for us. Another reason why we put the fabric down is so there won't be any punctures in the liner from the heavy rocks. And the same reason goes for putting the sand in, which is why we're putting the extra layer down here before we put our liner and then our aqua blocks. So we've got our third load of fill coming in this afternoon. We've got our reservoir in. We've got a 12 large aqua block reservoir. So that'll give you about 400 gallons of storage. So you see Dan's already started scratching out some of that area over there for that pooling area that will be kind of, I guess the depository area for the waterfalls that's closest to the patio over there. So a waterfall will start there, fall down into a pool, twist and turn. We'll meet up with the secondary waterfall, more of the main waterfall right over into here. and then it will converge and then do more of a stream coming into this reservoir. So really, really pleased with the progress that we've made today. Super excited for how it's gonna turn out. And I think we're gonna need a little bit more fill than just the three loads, but we'll see. I am willing to bet that we are going to have five trucks total. Dan thinks we're gonna need more. I don't, I'm not sure how many Luis thinks. How many trucks of dirt you think we're gonna bring in here? Three more? Okay, Luis says three more. Three more. 